Hi everyone, this is Chem Interview. Here we talk with the outstanding representatives of chemical science and industry. And today I'm happy to welcome our new guest. It's Vittorio Pace, a professor of organic chemistry at the University of Torino and a person who knows nearly everything about drug synthesis. Hello, Mr. Pace. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us a few words about your job? It's uh, really a, a pleasure to, to join your uh, brilliant initiative. And uh, I start presenting myself. I'm uh, Vittorio Pace, I'm Italian. Uh, I'm 40 years old and I'm full professor of organic chemistry at the University of Torino. As a background, I am a pharmacist. I graduated in 2005 uh, at the Italian University of Perugia in the center of the country. And then I moved uh, to Spain where I realized my PhD st studies, which afterwards were complemented by uh, postdoctoral experiences at the University of Vienna, Manchester and the United Kingdom and Stockholm. While I was in Stockholm, I received an offer for um, a group leader position, again at the University of Vienna, where I launched my uh, independent career in my research group, which culminated with uh, the habilitation for pharmaceutical chemistry I received from the University of Vienna in 2016. Then I continued to stay as a tenure track professor in synthetic medicinal chemistry in Vienna. And uh, at the end, in 2020, I received an offer for a full professorship at the University of Torino, uh, where I'm correctly, uh, currently working as uh, an academic. And why did you decide to choose organic chemistry? Why did you choose drug synthesis uh, as your major area? Uh, well, I just mentioned I, I studied pharmacy when I was uh, an undergraduate in Italy. And this was mainly motivated, I have, I have to say, for uh, family reasons, because both of my parents uh, possess a pharmacy. So I was uh, somehow uh, on the way to be a pharmacist. But uh, uh, after my second year of uh, undergraduate student, uh, as undergraduate student, I easily recognized that uh, organic chemistry really fascinated me. And this was um, a kind of... Um, progressive involvement and development of my skills towards this, this subject, which uh, I really worked, uh, I really pursued to, 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 to be successful in, 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 in organic chemistry. And then uh, being at the Faculty of Pharmacy, I always, uh, I always looked at the, the, the intimate essence of organic chemistry as a discipline useful for understanding more pharmaceutical relevant aspects. And for this reason, afterwards, I moved to the University of uh, to the Complutense University in Madrid for doing my PhD, which again was based at the interface between, uh, I would say, organic chemistry and, uh, and pharmaceutical chemistry. But uh, after my um, first postdoc, I I, I had really clear in my mind that uh, uh, maybe the more pure synthetic organic aspects were for me at least more important than applications in pharmacy. But I could never forget my uh, basics as a pharmacist also for uh, uh, developing and uh, considering applications on, uh, on synthetic methodologies we could, uh, we could, uh, we could assemble. Drug synthesis is a discipline which lies between pure synthetic organic chemistry and pharmaceutical sciences. Which skills should a good specialist in, in drug synthesis have? Do they differ from the ones that uh, pure organic chemists have? Well, I think uh, uh, organic chemistry really uh, is really present in almost all the levels of drug design. You cannot consider uh, the process of drug design without organic chemistry. And this, this is because it uh, really provides the logics for the molecular understanding of what, uh, of what is going uh, on, 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 a, on, a, on a drug or a potential drug on a lead compound. So um, I would say that uh, you can uh, uh, divide which part of organic chemistry 
can become important in each aspect of the drug design. For sure, at the beginning, you have, when you are modulating a receptor, you are studying a novel potential drug, you could really benefit from uh, uh, the knowledge at the interface between the pure organic and theoretical chemistry, physical chemistry. This is uh, absolutely important when you try to, uh, to create a model of uh, substance receptor. But then, when uh, you have you have already validated this uh, this model you would uh, really need uh, organic synthesis for making your uh, idea productive you can modulate on a computer in, as people say in silico but then you have uh, at least to attend the the, um, the to evaluate the biological activity of this compound for making this for reaching this goal, you need to provide to the system, to the animal system, to the in vitro model, uh, a drug. And this drug is just the result of a sequences of organic operations. And this is why an organic chemist or the knowledge in organic chemistry becomes fundamental for the process of drug design. So you can easily, I would say, divide the first part as the interface with physical chemistry, with theoretical chemistry, when you have to evaluate important aspects like uh, lipophilicity, uh, drug metabolism, and so on. And then before testing and uh, uh, before testing the biological evaluation, you need exclusively the knowledge in organic synthesis for preparing the compound. You have quite an interesting background uh, as you started as a pharmacist and made then a smooth transition from pharma to synthetic organic chemistry and drug synthesis. Was it difficult to move to the area of drug synthesis having a slightly different educational background? Okay, this is a, a really good point because um, I think that uh, a solid and robust education in organic chemistry really offers you all the skills for being successful in drug design. But just with the education in synthetic chemistry, in my opinion, you would not be completely, uh, completely, uh, completely proficient in managing the drug design process. You could have the logics, the basics, the theoretical fundamentals, but uh, there are aspects which somehow are proceeding from uh, biochemistry, from biology, and from medicinal chemistry, which are not always are uh, uh, considered as important subjects in the education of a chemist at the Faculty of Chemistry. So my strong recommendation is implementing the synthetic background, which is uh, furnished uh, uh, in a brilliant way at the faculties of chemistry with uh, biochemical knowledge and most importantly, with some medicinal pharmaceutical subject like medicinal chemistry one, medicinal chemistry two. Because in this way, you would even modulate your brain, your mind, to approaching to the problem, not always, not always from a synthetic, and maybe I would say rather, um, rather too much simple perspective, but you would really benefit from knowledge which can, uh, can proceed from uh, interlinked fields like pharmacology. This is, in my, my opinion, the importance of teaching medicinal chemistry. You are always doing chemistry, but you are always uh, looking at this chemistry in a more um, in, a, in a wider in a wider context, which for sure benefit from pharmacology. So, I think for a for um, a student of chemistry uh, interested in approaching to the drug design process, I would uh, ask him or her to include in their background some course of medicinal chemistry and pharmacology. 
because in this way you would have like a, a much more clear panorama, much more portfolio of, um, of tools that uh, before or after will be important for uh, uh, the successful management of your, uh, of your, of your, uh, of your project. Is it obvious that the person who wants to do the drug synthesis should have different qualifications from various fields of studies? Maybe you can recommend some good sources for the newcomers that they should start working with. Uh, a basic aspect is um, maybe for uh, undergraduate students to consider to look at organic chemistry as a pluripotent tool for understanding the drug design process. And uh, in this context, there is uh, a book, which is always on my desk, and uh, it's called uh, The Organic Chemistry of Drug Design and Drug Action. It's a book edited by Silverman, and the author is uh, Silverman, which really furnishes all, all, all the um, most important uh, organic chemistry knowledge requested to a, a, drug, uh, a drug modeler. And uh, this is because I don't see particular reasons for uh, implementing at this stage with, uh, with the article from the literature, although there are really good uh, reviews in, uh, in leading journal like chemical reviews or even uh, journal medicinal chemistry perspectives, which are highly indicative on a particular subject. But before embarking on this adventure, I would really recommend people, students, to look at this uh, Silverman's book, because uh, you, could, you could easily recognize that the most of the conceptual knowledge is already in your hands. What is helping this book is remodulating this knowledge and applying it to the process of drug design. I don't think, uh, just to, to, to cite an example, that I don't think a, a student of chemistry um, is not aware of what a ketone is from, uh, a, from uh, a molecular perspe perspective, from a reactivity perspective. But uh, how including a property of molecule in embodying a, a, a ketone moiety is something which is of the utmost interest for the drug design process. And all these kind of, uh, of, of, um, of considerations, in my opinion, are brilliantly expressed in this, uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this, um, in this book. For instance, when I was uh, uh, in my previous academic position in Vienna, I created a free lecture course which called was uh, the organic chemistry of drug design. And uh, the main reason was uh, providing students aspects which are not so important in the main lectures of organic chemistry one, organic chemistry two, or in medicinal chemistry. But it was just a kind of uh, bridging lecture between the pure organic chemistry and the pure pharmaceutical chemistry. And I think that uh, uh, people really uh, like this, uh, this, uh, this approach, this didactic approach to the basics of medicinal chemistry. And as we know, there is also a term called total synthesis. Are total synthesis and drug synthesis somehow related to each other? I mean, conceptually, both drug synthesis and total synthesis are uh, extremely related. Of course, when you are uh, considering a total synthesis, you are intimately uh, considering a high level of sophistication. Final compounds uh, proceeding from nature are extremely complex, are extremely complex architectures, mainly because of the number of stereogenic centers you can find on them. On them. And so, of course, uh, the famous uh, two elevated to n, where n is the number of stereo centers, really complicates, really complicates the number of possible poles. And so it becomes fundamental for the organic chemistry leading the group, understanding which is the more convenient and more cost-efficient approach to a given target. In summa, 
a, to a, a natural product can really look highly challenging to be prepared in the lab. When we move to synthetic, uh, uh, to synthetic entities, which are uh, probably uh, useful in medicinal chemistry, we in general go to a much uh, simple level. So structure are, can be sophisticated, but they are not prohibitive, if I can say it this way. And the logics uh, underpinning their construction is much, much more uh, simple. It's uh, based on, um, on trivial paradigms, 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 which uh, for sure can be faced with success in organic chemistry lab. The basics between the, the, um, the two, the two um, philosophy, uh, the two philosophies of making compounds, I reiterate, is the same. But uh, what is making a lead compound more simple is, I would say, also its intrinsic um, structural aspects, which of course have to uh, be of potential interest also for the pharma industry. At pharma industry, except in uh, uh, well demonstrated cases, people are interested in compounds somehow not too much complex, because of course complexity brings to a high level of uh, um, of uh, to a high level the costs related to the production of a given drug, both at the clinical phase, at the trial phase, and of course at the market phase. I'd like to ask you about the retrosynthetic approach. When I was studying at the university, we had some parts of organic chemistry course dedicated to this method. But when I started working in organic chemistry labs, I didn't see much of its usage. So it seemed like the total synthesis of different products was not quite rationalized and looked more like an art. Also, there is a famous book by Nicolau called Classics in Total Synthesis, which would fit better as a name for composition of writings rather than a serious scientific piece of work. Would you describe drug synthesis more like a science or like an art? Well, um, I think the drug synthesis is leveraged on uh, pure synthetic aspects, which somehow are the result of logical disconnections en route to a final compound. And uh, of course, you can easily take advantage of this uh, disconnection, uh, disconnective approach, because you are considering at the very end a simple compound. While when you move and you consider the first synthesis, as you just mentioned, the book of, 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 of Nicolau, who is a giant in the, in the topic. You are per se considering the total synthesis also as the result of complex rearrangement synthesis, which cannot always be foreseen at the beginning. You can rationalize, as Latin say, post quo, but considering always as happening at the beginning can be really problematic. But uh, the reason is because of the high level of complexity of the final compounds. In the case of a drug synthesis, you are dealing with, with more, much more simplified structures. And so you can easily, for example, you need the ketone and you would consider to oxidize an alcohol. And so the question would be in the retrosynthetic analysis, what can be a route for preparing an alcohol? So everything is much more programmable in, in, in drug synthesis. While in total synthesis, you have uh, a high level of risk for each of the operations, which under no circumstances that the total synthesis means uh, the not logical and not logical approach in, uh, in considering the, the different steps. But uh, you have uh, associated to each step a high level of risk. And so, I would think that uh, this part of the job, does not, this part of the risk is not intimately present when you consider a, a, a small molecule as your final target. 
you have mentioned the in silico drug design. As far as I know, nowadays there are a lot of different software packages that are successful in performing the retrosynthesis. It means that real medicinal and drug synthetic chemists could not differentiate between the route proposed by the machine and the one proposed by humans. So do you use these packages or you rely on any other in silico methods? Personally, for the uh, needings of my group, we do not use this, uh, uh, this approach. This is because uh, uh, my group has uh, uh, a strong component in uh, methodology development. This means that uh, um, we are much more focused on the development of new synthetic methods, which ultimately can be applied in uh, the drug of uh, in the in the synthesis of drug, much more than uh, modifying or just considering the drug as the primary objective of our research. So, for this reason, we conveniently, I would say, skip from using this uh, this uh, this um, these softwares, which, of course, if the focus of the group was much more uh, um, centered on uh, on the, the pure drug design and drug synthesis aspect. Of course, would have uh, an, uh, an, uh, dramatically benefited the the progress of our research. So we don't use them as uh, a first uh, tool in our lab because we are much more considering the development of methodological uh, new approaches in, uh, in, in synthesis, including drug synthesis. Switching to methodology development. As far as I know, in the last couple of decades, a very powerful synthetic method called flow chemistry was developed. To be more specific, synthesis is performed in micro-reactors or in microchips. So the flow chemistry enables optimization of the reaction conditions based on the AI methods. Do you utilize flow chemistry or AI evaluation of the results? Personally, in my group, we do not use microfluidic techniques, microflow technology. But this was because um, in the last years, I... Uh, I moved my, my interest towards the, the introduction of new synthetic concepts, much more than uh, implementing processes which per se already exist in chemistry. And uh, this is a, a key point for uh, microfluidic technologies. You can uh, do something potentially known since decades, but uh, unfortunately not previously realized because of the prohibitive reaction conditions that you could, uh, you could observe during the, the, the research and development. So the microfluidic technology for, for me is uh, uh, a tool of uh, outstanding value when you already would like to, um, I would say, far to implement something already known. Um, I would say just for my personal interest, I decided to, uh, to focus much more on completely new concepts, which for sure would benefit in the near future from combining with microfluidic technologies. I think uh, um, mainly for a relatively uh, not too big group like my group is, uh, you, the, the, the leader has to consider priorities. And in my case, the priority was, let's go for a new conceptual development. Then we would consider the implementation, which per se can be uh, achieved and assured via the microfluidic technology. But I have to be honest, in recent years, colleagues working in a field relatively close to my own uh, benefited enor enormously from uh, the advent of microfluidic technologies. For example, uh, Professor Nochel, 
at LMU really showed uh, uh, a series of uh, brilliant transformations just uh, realized uh, with microfluidic technologies, which were simply methodologies not, rea uh, not realizable without the, uh, the aid of microfluidic technologies. And uh, I have to be honest, for the chemistry I do, microflu microfluidic techniques are extremely important because usually my chemistry is uh, leveraged on the use of um, very reactive reaction uh, species, very uh, reactive intermediates like carbon ions. And so a, 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 an added value, a plus added value imparted by, uh, by microfluidic techniques is just properly taming the intrinsic high reactivity of these species.